how much of this English village scene can I draw in 15 minutes? Probably sketch is a better word to use than draw. So I'm starting with a 0.5 millimeter fine line just for this very closest building, but then I'm going to switch to a 0.3 millimeter pen for the rest of the scene. I'm hoping to get most of it done, or at least to get the overall feel of it done. I do these sorts of quick sketches in anticipation that I'll actually get overseas again sometime soon and get the chance to sit in the street and draw this sort of scene. So sometimes I want to kind of really loosen up in my mind and put aside perhaps not so much the standards, but some of the techniques that I use and the ways I think when I want to draw a more considered precise drawing. But I do know that with a scene such as this, this front closest right hand building and window is I think a fairly fundamental anchor point and an important point for us to read the age and the type of village subject that we have. It also gives a nice scale and a nice piece of interest as well because the rest of the scene is going to be very gestural. So while this window is, according to my normal way of drawing, quite a, a gestural drawing, it's not nearly as gestural as the, every other window is going to be. So. Look, I'm, I'm not sure how much time to invest in this. As it turns out, I, I put about five minutes of my 15 minutes on this building, not counting trying to indicate the stonework, which I do at the end. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to look at the clock too much because I don't want to just sort of scribble it, but I really want to stay loose and not be too caught up with, as I said, the same sort of precision that I normally worry about. I've actually sped this up a little bit. Um, I think it's one and three quarters speed. And I do do, I think it's about a minute and three quarters after I finish the 15 minutes. And so I'll tell you when that happens. There were just a few details I really wanted to add and um, felt that the scene really needed them for the sake of that extra sort of less than two minutes. So now I've switched to my 0.3 millimeter fine liner and I'm referencing off now this first right hand side building which was another good reason to take a bit of care with it because in effect it's my ruler for alignment now as I, as I move to the left and I am drawing pretty quickly I'm not taking that second and third alignment check look that I normally take. I'm, I'm doing, in almost all cases, one measurement across, aligning it with where that detail is against the window on the right, and then I'm committing to it. I do figure that I won't get too far out of track with that and um, can probably fudge any, any error that, that I have. Now, there is a lot of overlapping things here with these signs, and so it's important to make sure that I draw the signs before I draw the things that are behind the signs. Even I think in a very fast sketch such as this, this sense of things being in front, things being behind, it lets us stop our line work so that it doesn't quite touch, let alone overlap or go through, which really helps give a sense of three dimensions of space of this street moving back. And I think that's particularly important in a street where the street is angled away. We really want to get a sense that the street moves away from us. So probably the area that um, I think I did the, the poorest job on was anything above that top roof line. The, the, win the, the roofs, the, the, the tiles, the, the um, dormer windows and, and the like. It's certainly not quite as accurate as I would have liked, but I think in a fairly quick gestural sketch, I've captured enough accuracy that we read what they all are easily enough and without any obvious kind of line out of place. So placing the people in the street is also important. And what I like to do is to align the heads with whatever's happening on the front of the buildings and then to put a mark where I want their feet to go. And it's a good rule of thumb, always draw the head smaller than you think it's going to be because it's not hard to increase the size if it turns out being a bit small. But well, usually in my case, it ends up not being too small. Now, all of these figures are fairly silhouetted with the sun almost overhead, but slightly in front of them. So 
So I'm doing them all as, as just fairly dark silhouetted outlines, which really works well in a super fast drawing. So the main thing with capturing these facades is that I get the foreshortening approximately correct and, and the, the perspective angles consistent from building to building with the lines that have been established already. Now, in, in a scene such as this, where often the lines aren't truly horizontal in these old buildings, or if they were when they were built, they're not anymore. So therefore, again, there's a bit of wiggle room with the... Um, with our perspective angles. They don't have to be quite as exact as if it were a modern skyscraper. Now I'm just doing a couple of foreground figures because I need to get the foreground people done before I can do those figures in the, the far distance. And they're the sorts of figures we want to do, but do with a, with a nice light touch. I was tempted to switch to a 0 0.2 millimeter pen, but I thought, look, I'll keep it as simple as I can and just stay with the one and just try and do my lines more quickly and press in a little more lightly on the paper to create a, uh, an effect, a feel of distance. Now I realize I've, I've um, probably run a bit too far down the street or I've positioned my paper badly. So I, I'm just squeezing this, this last bit now and I've learned a valuable lesson about setting things up a little more accurately before I start drawing with the camera. So I fudged this dormer window a little bit, didn't quite have that top perspective angle high enough, and that meant that I didn't hide the top of the roof, which I needed to be able to do, so I had to rearrange that. There's a bit of an art in knowing which lines are worth redoing over the top of, because a heavier line will draw attention. So sometimes just leaving things as they are is, is really the better option. But other times a correct line really does stand out nice and, um, nice and clearly and, and takes the eye. I slow down a bit with some of these details, the chimneys and whatnot, because I'm realising that I, I, something's not quite right and things aren't lining up as exactly as I would like them to. But again, hey, it's a 15 minute sketch and I'm, I'm keeping it nice and loose and pretending that I'm in the street and I'm uncomfortable and I've lost circulation in my left ankle and I really need to get this finished that uh, the people I'm with want to go and get a cup of tea somewhere and they don't want to hang around while I sit here finishing this drawing. Do people sympathize with these scenarios? Now, I want to suggest some detail on the street with the, the, the pavers, the cobblestones, the, the, the gutters, because that's a fairly important part of this scene. I really want to capture some of those details. And my time is so close to being up now, but I really want to indicate some of these larger stones on this closest building. The thing I didn't do in this, in this closest building was give any hatching to indicate some of the darker tones we see behind the panes of glass. I would have liked to have done that, but I really was working really hard not to, um, not to go over my 15 minutes. So I'm just about finished the 15 minutes here with, with this building. There's a few bit of details at the base where the wall comes out slightly, and then some little fiddly bits that I did a pretty terrible job with. And I think we're pretty much done with the 15 minutes now. So um, when I finish this wall, I'm now done with that. So now we're into overtime. And what I missed that I really wanted to do was there was a clutter of chairs outside the front of that cent more central um, shop window with a lady sitting there and someone standing with her. So I decided I really wanted to put those and then I also hadn't finished that window in the shop immediately to the right that had the adult and child standing in front of it. And again, I felt that was sort of central and I really wanted to put that. And there's also a doorway which is mostly shadow behind the child. So I wanted to do that as well. So I thought, well, this won't take more than 60 seconds to very quickly capture this. So I will just do this. And then I will finish my ever so slightly more than 15 minute sketch. 
and this is my capture. So if you'd like to have a go yourself, seeing what you can capture in 15 minutes, I'll pop this photo on my channel community page and you can have a go yourself. G'day, I'm Stephen Travis. Look, I hope you found this super sped up um, drawing of, of mine interesting. It's a very different style of drawing to how I normally do. But hey, however you draw, whatever you draw, make sure you have fun. Bye.